Let me first start by saying that I'm very pleased to be here at the SID World Congress. Uh, I think one of the projects which ICF has had, which is really sustainable, is the demographic and health survey which we do, which, in, which we do across 90 countries, where we collect fertility data, uh, prevalence of disease data, as well as data associated with prevalence of HIV, AIDS, malaria, um, uh, and, and all kinds of additional quality of life indicators, uh, which is funded by a bunch of development agencies as well as uh, foundations, which then forms the basis for public policy decisions on where to deploy resources in order to make sure that we eradicate some of these diseases uh, and, and improve the quality of life in each of these countries. And it has become sort of the basis for, uh, for estimation of AIDS prevalence worldwide. And in fact, the most significant thing which happened in 2007 was that there was, after this survey, uh, the prevalence of AIDS was decreased, if you remember, by 20-25% because I think the general sense was there were 40 million cases and then became assessed to be 33 million and I think the data is very very useful and has been over the years because of the fact that it has allowed development agencies to fund their resources to to improve quality of life in those specific areas so I think that's a really impactful projects and it has has and has a lot of support from the countries themselves so it's not only it's funded by Western agencies but is really liked by the countries primarily because of the fact that they really use the data uh, to form their policies. I think that absolutely buy-in by the countries is really essential, which reflects this morning's conversations. And I do think that regardless of what uh, the donor agencies feel or uh, the development banks feel, I think the education of the recipients is really important for them to really embrace the initiatives. And I think anything we do in terms of, de of development assistance has to be done through a series of uh, uh, educational initiatives which makes, makes clear to folks that we are doing this and you should adopt it because of the following reasons. And they need to be convinced and they need to do it because of the fact that they think it's the right thing to do. So I think, I think just reflecting what happened in this, this morning, I think we, we do need to make sure that there is buy-in from both sides when we, when we take a development initiative. And I think that's an important element, which is very, a significant thing for this survey too. One of the themes uh, is sustainable future. I think there's a lot of discussion about sustainability and future. I use common sense definitions of sustainability. I think it's an intergenerational use of resources and we need to make sure that we use them adequately so that we, we, we resource them and, and regenerate them in the course of one generation so that we don't take away from generations following. And I do think that uh, the important thing is that the externalities associated with the use of resources do need to be brought in to the picture when we look at uh, sustainability. And I think the fundamental problem with uh, all a lot of industrial activity and other things at the moment is that externalities are not included when the, when the impacts of, of uh, industri industrialization and other things is taken into account. So I think the, the, the importance about sustainable future is that development will never be successful unless we can make sure that both in the developed and the developing world you know, we, we look at sustainability in a very significant sort of focus sort of way. I think the, the developed world is, has done a lot of things which perhaps we don't want the developing world to be doing. But in order to do that, an example has to be set by the developed world. And it's really essential that climate change issues, issues associated with greenhouse gas emissions and other things, initiatives which have become a little less important over the last few years, again take precedence as we move forward. Because I think setting an example is really quite important. I think that you know we basically will benefit because we are members of the Sid Washington chapter. Uh, we are uh, quite supporters of the Sid World Congress. I think we have done a lot of work in both developing and the developed world on issues of health, environment, uh, climate change, as well as energy. And I think that examples and projects which we have done in developed world can be adapted in the developing world with these circumstances being taken into account. And I think as we move forward in this, in, in this whole conversation, we should be able to use the experience in one in the other. So it's just not developed versus de to, to developing, it can also be developing to develop.